A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today an integral battle between 1 over x minus x natural log of x versus 1 over 1 minus x natural log of x. So just a little difference in the x right here, but this makes a huge difference in the end result. Please note, this one doesn't have upper and lower bounds, we just search for the antiderivative and this one is from 0 to 1. Try it out and once you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. But before we dive into the main video, something rather serious. Maybe you have seen my recent community posts. Here they are. Please read through those and then keep watching. So my laptop got grilled internally by its own battery and it seems like all the data is completely lost. Problem is, um, I'm doing YouTube for my living and without editing videos, I just can't produce videos. This video right here has been edited by a subscriber of mine. He was kind enough to um, ask if he could help me in editing the video. So thank you very much for that. Um, but other than that, I created a GoFundMe um, to basically get the funds for a new laptop. So if I ever made you laugh, if I entertained you, educated you in some kind of way, made your day in some kind of way better in the last few years, I have been doing this for five years, basically for free for most of the people watching this right here. Maybe you got a buck to spare um, such that we can get the videos coming. Um, so yeah, that's basically all about that. The link to the GoFundMe is on there in the description. And now we are going to dive right in. Let's go ahead and get started with this integral over there. And the first thing you might notice is that x is a common factor on both of those terms. Let us factor this x out and this actually plays a huge role in getting this integral done. So we get the integral fr um, from nowhere to nowhere um, of 1 over x times 1 divided by 1 minus the natural log of x all integrate with respect to x. And now most of the time you don't like denominators in, inter in integrals and also you don't like logarithms. You want to get rid of this most of the time. So let us substitute this whole denominator right here including the log of x for let's say t. So let t be equal to 1 minus the natural log of x. So now if we differentiate both sides implicitly we are going to get that the differential dt is equal to 1 is gonna uh, yeah it's just gonna disappear as a constant minus derivative of log of x is 1 over x dx and now you're gonna notice 1 over x dx is already included inside of the integrand which is very great so we can just substitute this for our differential dt don't forget the negative sign so we are going to get negative the integral of just dt and what else do we have we have one over our substituted variable t and well this is very easy to integrate because the integral of one over t is nothing other than the natural log of t so this gives us negative the natural log of t um, also t is nothing other than one minus log of x giving us negative the natural log of 1 minus um, log of x plus some arbitrary constant kappa. <laughs> I love to use kappa. Also you can track the negative sign into here giving you the natural log of 1 over 1 minus log of x plus some arbitrary constant kappa. You could go even further and say that this right here is nothing other than the natural log of e to the kappa and then you could track it into here giving you a very nice antiderivative. But this is for the first one. I didn't include the up and lower bounds from 0 to 1 because for that it would obviously diverge for log of x where x goes to zero, this will give us one minus infinity. No, one plus infinity and log of infinity goes to infinity. So this would diverge. Now let us go for the other integral. And for this one, it's a bit different because we don't have a common factor down here in the denominator. But what you maybe notice is that this thing here is of the form one over one minus something. And if it's in the radius of convergence, namely from 0 to 1, we can actually make use of the geometric series here. Turning all of this into the integral from 0 to 1 of, and the geometric series of this thing is going to give us the 
sum or series where um, n is greater or equal to zero of x times log of x to the nth power dx. This looks mighty different, but it's actually a pretty good form that we can play around with. Now what we are going to do is we are going to um, interchange those two integrals, so the infinite summation and also our integral. Yeah, there are different criteria for which we can do this, but we are just going to do it here. Um, we are just going to do this without any restrictions, interchanging those, giving us um, the infinite series of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the nth power times log of x to the nth power dx. Now this right here is nothing that looks very good. This looks like something that you could maybe solve by doing integration by parts n times on our x. But the logarithm, you would need to integrate the logarithm then um, n times, which is not very nice. So rather what we would like to do is we would like to get rid of the logarithm. This is hard to integrate. This is not nice. What we would rather like to have is the exponential function in some kind of way. So we are just going to turn this thing around a tiny bit and we are going to say let log of x be equal to t. And if we have this and we plug in the upper and lower bound, so we get the infinite series n being greater or equal to zero. And then we are going to get from, if we plug zero into here, uh, this is going to be just um, negative infinity as the lower bound, which is not very nice. So let us put a little negative sign into here, giving us infinity in the process. And at one evaluated, we are going to get t being equal to zero. Okay, that's a tiny little bit better. If we were to um, use the exponential function on both sides, we can just bring the negative sign over here. So giving us negative t and then exponentiating both sides gives us that x is nothing other than e to the negative t. So we could substitute our x for that, giving us e to the um, negative t to the nth power so we can bring the um, nth power down into um, the exponent of the exponential function and other than that log of x is gonna be nothing other than negative t don't forget that so negative t to the nth power but we still need to implicitly differentiate that giving us in the process that let's just implicitly differentiate this part that's a bit easier than substituting other stuff in here so dx is going to give us a negative e to the negative t dt that's our differential dx we can plug this in so negative e to the negative t dt and now we can bring a bunch of constants to the front and then we can go ahead and sort things out a tiny little bit. So what you're going to notice is that negative t to the nth power is nothing other than negative 1 to the nth power times t to the nth power. And same thing here, we can bring the negative 1 to the front giving us negative 1 to the nth plus 1th power overall. So let us put this onto the new chalkboard, giving us that we get the infinite series where n is going from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1th power. Other than that, inside of the integral, um, actually what we could also do is um, since we have one negative one more than we actually need. So this plus one part, we could actually use it to interchange our upper and lower bounds here um, on the integral. So let us do this real quick. Let's get rid of this plus one here and we are just gonna change the upper and lower bounds of the integral around. What we still have is e to the negative nt and we also have e to the negative t giving us e to the negative nt minus t where minus t is a common factor giving us e to the negative t times n plus 1 and also we are still going to be left with t to the nth power dt Okay, this is nice. Um, this looks actually way better than the one before. We could make use of integration by parts here, for example, um, and see if we could land at any point nice. But we could go a bit further. You see, if we were to get rid of this part up here, it would be actually even a bit easier. So let us substitute t 
times n plus 1 for example for s giving us in the process that n plus 1 dt is nothing other than ds or dividing both sides by n plus 1 gives us an expression for our um, differential dt giving us in the process that this is the infinite series of negative 1 to the nth power. If we plug 0 into our t, we are going to get s being equal to 0, 2. And if we let t go to infinity, um, n is a positive number. By the series, we are going to get positive infinity. Then we are going to get e to the negative s, because we substitute this for s, times, and t is nothing other than s divided by n plus 1. So s to the nth power divided by n plus 1 to the nth power and ds divided by n plus 1. Overall what we can now do is we can bring the n plus 1 and n plus 1 to the nth power together to just being n plus 1 to the n plus 1 which is very nice and we can bring this 1 over blah 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 to the front giving us overall that we end up with the infinite series where n is greater or equal to 0 of negative 1 to the nth power divided by n plus 1 to the n plus 1's power and now times the integral from mm, 0 to infinity of s to the nth power times e to the negative s ds and why did Papa do that. Why did I bring it into this form where you could make use of integration by parts or you could be a smart boy and see, well, holy shit, Papa Fleming, that's just a gamma function right here. I want you guys to remember that this thing right here is the same as the gamma function of n plus 1, which is the same as n factorial. Meaning overall, our other integral evaluates to the very, very nice expression of being the infinite series where n is greater or equal to zero of negative one to the n power divided by n plus one to the n plus one times gamma of n plus one, where this is nothing other than n factorial. Isn't that absolutely fabulous? What a crazy series you are getting out. And this right here, I don't think you can solve this in any kind of way analytically. It evaluates to roughly 0.83 or something of that sort. But I think that this right here is an extremely cool solution to a very underwhelming looking integral in comparison to this one. Just changing around an x down here in the denominator gives us something completely different which goes completely overboard and you need to make use of a lot of tools that you have learned during your um, integration career to actually get yourself a solution out. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Which one was your favorite? tell me down there in the comments below. And if you are into analysis, integrals, calculus, and all this cool stuff that we did here today, and even more, then I invite you to check out the content of today's sponsor, Brain. We're kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. If you're not yet familiar with Brain, let me introduce you to their amazing services. Brain is one of the best online learning platforms out there on the internet, if not the best, at least in my opinion, to learn something new in the STEM field on a daily basis. Doesn't matter if you want to learn something about the mathematics that we did today or maybe something completely different, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, no matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field, Brilliant is there for you with nearly 70 interactive courses where you can learn everything from group theory and mathematics over to geometry, um, special and general relativity, re redox reactions, everything you can possibly think of right now on the spot that is somewhere in the STEM field will be covered over there in some kind of way. And the best thing about Brilliant is their interactive course concept. Learn something about calculus over there. You are not familiar yet with derivatives. Well, it's very easy to learn something about derivatives over on print because they not only give you those abstract things that you need to learn, like the first principle and the likes. No, they also give you a visual understanding of the problem at hand. Derivatives are just a great example because you can see graphically very nicely if you have this tangent along a curve. Once you reach the top of maximum, for example, the slope of the tangent line is just zero, meaning you have a high spot inside of a curve in an extremum if the first derivative is equal to zero. And it's just all over the place. All the things that you can learn over in print will be handed to you in some kind of way with graphics and visuals that you can play around with on the spot. And if this feels like it's something for you, if this sounds great to you, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash samplemaths. With it, you are gonna get 
30 day free trial of awesomeness. Try out everything, see if it's something for you. And if you feel like it could be something for you and Brian in a long term relationship, then make sure to actually make clicky clicky on the linky linky to get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is absolutely a fantastic deal because they add so much new content on a regular basis and so much content is already there that you have years worth of learning experience that you can just try out over on their website and that you can just make use of to learn something new on a regular basis, daily, at home or while being outside by using the mobile app. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, please make sure to check out the GoFundMe. And if, as mentioned before, I ever made you laugh or cry or cringe or whatever in one of my videos or something, or if you feel like this, channel should just be kept alive and we should post more videos here then yeah definitely make sure to spare a buck for the course um other than that uh, i'm trying to do my best to get my hands on a new laptop very soon but up until now thank you very much for the subscriber of mine who um just does edit this video right now so thank you very much for your services and i'm gonna take you i wish you guys a flammable day see ya